Live from Hollywood, California, DJ Vernon Husky, the Big Vanilla Funnies, unsportsmanlike conduct. Unsportsmanlike conduct. The dentist only touched the spot, touched my baby's skin. What up, 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 I love that joy right there, man, VJ's Unsportsmanlike like conduct, I am your host, VJ Vernon Husky, the Big Vanilla Funny, VJ, right, that's because he always thinks he is, Mr. 8515, the Big Vanilla Shack, the Creamy Kobe, the Blue Eye Barkley, the Big Vanilla Color Card, because I got to deal them joints out, because sometimes in sports you got to play the color card, and there's always a guy that needs to deal them out, and when you need your Big Vanilla Vegas dealer, I am that guy, man. Great show for you guys tonight. I want to appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it. I want to thank everybody for joining in live right now on Spreaker.com and we'll be podcasting later on iHeartRadio. Everybody that's on my YouTube channel live right now and everybody that is on my Instagram live right now. And Miss B More, Miss Nasty is already in the building, one of my faithful listeners and one of my faithful supporters and fans. So I appreciate it. Got a nice show for y'all tonight, mama. We'll talk NFL. We'll get into some of the quarterback carousel. This is this is the biggest quarterback carousel or quarterback offseason I think we've seen in the last 20 years. It, 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 it could easily be 20 years that we've seen this type of talk from the draft, from free agents, from trades, from guys wanting out, guys restructuring their deals to stay, guys asking to be traded, guys asking to be ceremoniously, unceremoniously released. Let me go. Let me go find my own team. You, you guys obviously don't want me. I, I think I can go get some money. I think I made myself some money. You already kind of signed this other guy. Let me go and spread my wings and fly like an eagle. This is one of the best quarterback off seasons we've ever seen in the NFL. And we'll get a lot into that. We'll talk some NBA. We're going to talk about some of these buyouts that are going on right now. My beloved Detroit Pistons, I'm so happy. They finally got rid of fake Frosted Blake, softest Frosted Flake cereal that you leave in the milk way too long. I'm so glad he's gone. Jeff Van Gundy set our franchise back five to seven years by trading for fake Frosted Blake Griffin. I've been telling y'all what kind of player he was and what he truly was all the way back to Oklahoma in the Sweet 16 game against the Tar Heels or the Elite 8 game. I think it was either, there might have been the Elite 8 game against the Tar Heels and people thought he was good enough to beat that Tar Heel team by himself. He's a dunker. He's an average jump shooter. He's an average defender. He's an average passer. He's an average rebounder. He never averaged over eight boards a game with those kind of hops. That's not a dude that's trying to be in the post, be in the paint, debowing, getting boards, playing hard. That's a finesse guy. If he never played with Chris Paul, we would never, we would, he'd be out of the league. If Blake Griffin never played with Chris Paul, he'd be out of the league right now. He was Clarence Weatherspoon at best. But everybody gets excited over dunks and highlights and videos online and, and memes and now, all of a sudden, come on, with the Nets, you could have signed with anybody. Your team is not going to not win or win a championship today, 2021, March going forward, March 9th going forward. Your team's not going to win nor lose because you have or don't have frosted fake Blake Griffin. So he's gone signed with the Nets. You got Drummond in Cleveland. Are they going to buy him out? Are they trying to work a trade? There's some other guys we'll throw out there and talk about too. I think that really want out. And I think teams should make deals to get guys out and get them to maybe where they want to be or at least put them on a contender if they put their time in. There are a lot of guys right now asking to get out, trying to go win, but it's like you haven't even done anything. You haven't even put in that type of legacy where people would say, oh, Gary Payton, yeah, it's cool he signed with the Lakers because he put in his time. He got to the finals. He ran into Jordan. He put in his time in Seattle with Rayman and Nate McMillan and Sam Perkins and Detlef Shrimp and Aaron McKee. Come on, I, I remember that squad and Eddie Johnson. I remember that squad back in the day. He put his time in. Couldn't get over the home. Couldn't get a ring. All right, no problem. I'll go to L.A. Same with Carl Malone. You put in that much time in, in, in Salt Lake City. You run into Jordan back-to-back years. If not for Jordan, him and Stockton would probably have a ring. If not for Michael Jordan, they ran into him twice, back to back, 97, 98, no dice, no chip. 
But at the end of his career, you don't mind if he goes to try to get a ring. He put his time in somewhere. You got guys that have played four or five years in the league, and I want to go somewhere and win. And I want to. Yeah, everybody want to win, dog. Everybody wants to win, but everybody can't win. There's only one champion in every sport, every single year, every single season. That's not changed in sports. There's only one champion. Only one team can win. You want to win so bad, help your team get better, make your team win. Yes, I know there's some bad organizations. I know there's some bad GMs. I know there's some bad VPs of operations. I know there's some bad head coaches. I know there's some bad play callers. I get all of that. I know there's receivers that drop the ball, and it'll make a quarterback's percentage drop. I know some running backs that don't have a good line, and it makes their yards per carry drop. I get all of that. But real Gs, real champions, real legends, real icons, they they work with what's with them. And they get them to play better. All front of us got to make a move or two, yeah. But I can I can I can win with this. But give me like just give me that guy and I, I will win. We'll win with what we have here. Not trade four guys for one guy. Nah, hell no. So we got a lot to talk about, a lot to cover, man. The first thing I want to start off with, and I'll start my opening rant this way, is I am I, I think I am turned into the the guy who says if you feel like your quarterback is your guy. Regardless of a bad season, I, I think you should stick with your guy. And I think a lot of times, and we're seeing it right now, and the first quarterback I want to go to a team I want to talk about is the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I like Jalen Hurts. I've put it out there plenty of times. I liked him at Alabama. Some of my kind of, I guess, Tua unlike or, or dislove for Tua and uh, Tagovailoa down with my beloved Miami Dolphins is the simple fact that I really didn't like the fact that Jalen Hurts got hurt after winning the national championship, and then he, when he comes back, he loses his job. It's like, but I was hurt. But all he does is this transfer to Oklahoma, and then he takes Oklahoma right to the college playoff, win their conference, win their conference championship game, and go to the college playoff. He's legit. Philly is fine. But they did just draft Carson Wentz like four years ago. It's like four or five years. They just drafted Carson Wentz. Think about it. Wentz and golf, one, two, both gone to different teams. Both gone to different teams. And remember, there were L.A. Ram fans saying, we should have took Wentz. We should have took Wentz. It's funny how the legal turn when the quarterback is scrambling on a national TV game and diving in the end zone to make a play for his team when, they're up, when their record is 11-2. He's a front runner probably for the MVP. And just two guys who can't tackle him up high get there a little late. But simultaneously, they hit his legs. Crack his knee, tears ACL, and he is never the same QB again. That team that he's on that goes 11-2 and two, goes on to win the Super Bowl with Nick Foles, who can't win nowhere else, who can't do nothing. Chicago's looking for another quarterback right now. Who was their quarterback this past year? Trubisky and Foles. Foles with the Jacksonville got paid. What'd he do there? Nothing. Foles is like Ryan Fitzpatrick, although Foles had the, 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 the luxury of playing with Philly for that year to win that Super Bowl. But he's Ryan Fitzpatrick without the Super Bowl. Play for a bunch of different teams. You're never really going to win with him. You're not going to win a championship with Nick Foles. Well, you did, but he didn't play the whole season. Carson got you through the first 13 and a half games. You're, excuse me, 12 and a half games, or 13 and a half games, yes. You were 11 and 2. He got you through the first 13 and a half games, 11 and 2. You guys are on a roll. You can't screw that up. And Philly did it. They went and won the Super Bowl. They already have divorced that quarterback. They already have fired that head coach. Where you turn to the NBA, and I like I like Rick Carlisle, but that championship with the Mavs is a long time ago. It's a decade ago, and he still has his job, and they can't get out of the first round. And in most years, they don't make the playoffs, and they're in trouble now because Porzingis is soft. You got to kind of reset this thing. You got to get Luka some help. Are Luka's going to fade? He's going to fade. He's going to be a guy who could just put up stats. Got to get that kid some help. But when you talk about quarterbacks, I think you stay with your guy. Deshaun Watson is a guy that's names out there, and he's the biggest fish out there for everybody to try to go get this offseason. People think is going to really tilt the draft, and we'll talk about the draft. I got a little mini mock draft that I'm kind of watching. I haven't written my own yet, but there's a few that I'm watching, and some of the picks I think are smarter are right picks. These mock drafts, they never go you know, according. There's always a surprise. There's always a trade. There's always a player that jumps up. There's always a player that something creeps out about 48 hours or 24 hours or 12 hours or three hours before the draft, something that hits the internet. It happened to Laramie Tunsil. So Laramie Tunsil could have easily been the number one overall pick, number two or three, but a video resurfaced right before the draft of him 
taking a bong hit with a gas mask like a year prior to that or two years prior to that in college or something like that. And of course, the the so righteous and and a so righteous and upstanding NFL said, "Oh man, can we take this?" Yeah, he had a gas mask on. He was in college or high school, smoking some trees. Give me a break. You got owners and coaches who do blow, and you're worried about a tackle who could probably anchor your left side, and that's what he's doing for the Houston Texans, and make all pro, that's what he's doing for the Houston Texans, and make pro balls, that's what he's doing for the Houston Texans. You're going to let that judge whether you're going to draft this kid or not? Come on. Stop it. And Miami, he just wasn't productive there. Miami wanted to get draft capital. He was a player they can move. They think we can replace him. Or we have a collective great line. Maybe we don't need a Laramie Tunsil. There's different ways that a lot of this coaching and stuff goes. But nonetheless, you have a team that just gave up on the head coach and the quarterback. And Deshaun Watson, he he wants out. I don't think Houston's going to trade him. But if you're a team right now and you think you're a quarterback away, you get in on this Deshaun Watson thing. But if I, I like what Houston's doing, I'm sticking with my guy. I'm not trading him. We're not trading you. If you don't want to play, you'll be in breach of contract. But let us try. Got a new GM. Got a new head coach. Let us try to fix this. Let us let us try. Where are you going to go? And come to Miami. Miami's got to give up the three and the 18 and next year's first. That, okay, so there goes there goes your Jalen Waddle or your possible Najee Harris or your possible Jamar Chase or your possible Deontay Smith to line up with on offense and give you a weapon. No, you'll get Gilsuki and you'll have uh, Smythe at the tight end position. And I like Gilsuki. I, I like him a lot, but he's not uh, Waller. You know what I'm saying? You got Kyle Pitts coming out of Florida, who's just a freak at that size, that speed. I saw somebody in a mock draft have Miami trade out of the third with, with Broncos. Let Broncos go up and get their next quarterback. There's Justin Fields at number three sitting right there waiting for you, either him or Zach. Uh, it was a Zach Miller out of, out of BYU. We all know Trevor's going number one. That's what I'm saying. This quarterback thing, guys. And I know I'm all over the map a little bit with the quarterbacks right now. And I'll get back to to stick with your guy. But this quarterback carousel this season is just flat out amazing. This is good stuff, man. You got golf goes to Detroit. Now Matthew Stafford comes out to L.A. Both these teams drafted these guys number one overall. These guys are these guys are top draft picks number one. Matter of fact, I have a list here. Of the past overall number one picks in the NFL, I believe it's the past decade. Is it? Yes, yeah, the past decade. Listen to these names and just listen to the names, positions, and where these guys are right now. And this will tell you a lot about the quarterback carousel and the quarterback position in the NFL. 2011, Cam Newton. MVP, 15-1, and one, got to a Super Bowl. After that, spiraled out of control. Andrew Luck, 2012, quarterback out of Stanford, number one overall to the Colts. Got to a conference championship game, got your ass handed to you by the Patriots, though. Was it 41 to 3, 44 to 6, or like got your ass whipped? Other than that, divisional round, wild card team. Andrew Luck retires within that first 11, 10 years out of the NFL. Can't take it with the neck, I'm gone. Offensive tackle 2013, Eric Fisher, left tackle for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Trade, it's not even there anymore. Javon Clowney, the guy I tried, Javion Clowney, the guy I tried to tell everybody about because it was, listen, there's there are certain pass rushers that come out of college and Jay's quarterbacks so are just really good at it. He was a guy that was just really good at making the wow play. And I think a lot of times in scouting, especially with social media and television sports media, we use the wow play to actually show as what he can do. No, that's a wow play. You have to show me technique. Hand placement, hand usage, uh, bend. Can he really get low and bend the corner and bend on these big tackles with speed, not lose ground and go get the quarterback? Spin move, club move, swim move, something special. It didn't have any more. It was just wow factor. The play against Michigan and the outback ball against uh, Smith, the running back from Michigan, they showed over and over and over. And it's that helmet popping off, the helmet popping off, the helmet popping off. And But the rest of the game, Jake, the rest of the game, Taylor Lewan, the left tackle at uh, all pro left tackle, by the way, at the Tennessee Titans right now, he owned Clowney the rest of that game. Clowney made like two plays. He owned Clowney the rest of that game. He was also a top five draft pick that year. 2015, Jameis Winston, we don't even know if he's even going to play with the Saints. Tampa moved on to Tom Brady and went and won the Super Bowl. Jared Goff just spoke about him. He's on to Detroit. Could you imagine living? I live in Los Angeles. Could you imagine living in Los Angeles 
and then being traded to Detroit. Just lifestyle wise. Can you imagine living in Los Angeles and then being traded to the Detroit Lions? Let me see. There's somebody else. What's up, Chef Man? Andrew Point here. I'm sorry. I'm just reading some of the messages, guys, that I do have. I do want, I always want to get make sure I give shout outs to everybody that does join the live feeds on my uh, social media. So what's up to the chef and what's up to V more Miss Nicely over there on IG. Appreciate you guys. 2017, Miles Garrett. That's worked out. 2018, Baker Mayfield. That's worked out, but we're still within four or five years. 2019, Kyler Murray. 2020, Joe, Joe Barrow. And 2021 is going to be Trevor Lawrence. The, the last... if. If Trevor Lawrence is drafted, which we probably know he was, since 2015, that would make seven quarterbacks taken in the draft. And the first, excuse me, six. Six of the last seven years, a quarterback was taken number one overall. The league is starting to see and realize you have to have a quarterback to have any shot. To have any shot. That's why Dak can pull his power move. And get his deal for forty million a year, which people said he could he wouldn't get from Dallas. He's not going to get it. He's not going to get that money. He's not worth that money. Listen, man, the quarterback position. You better get your guy. You better pay your guy. That's why I say stick with your guy. Dallas did it. Stick with your guy. I know Pittsburgh has restructured Big Ben's contract, and Big Ben has agreed to it. That's your guy. What are you going to do if you're Pittsburgh? You're gonna what are you going to what are you going to go get? Who are you going to go draft? If I were to pull up a, a mock draft, who, who do people have them taking? Not a quarterback. But what are you going to do? You might as well just let Big Ben ride it out. Where are you going to go? Stick with your guy. Unless you see a guy you know you, go, go, you can go get that could be your man and that can win you some football games. Change your franchise around. That's what Miami is hoping to it is. I think there's people in Miami on the staff and Miami in the front office and just like the fan base. I think there's a lot of people that think he can do it. And I think there's a lot of people that have a question mark. He's that guy. It's like, man, man, he looks so great at Alabama. Yeah, so did Matt Jones. We'll see how that ends up. Matt Jones has now shot himself into the first round because he gets the handoff and throw to Najee Harris out of the backfield. And he got the throw to Levante Smith all season long. When you're at Alabama, we have that much talent. I said this about Tua. This was my main thing about Tua. We have that type of talent. Everybody's open. Everybody's always open. You remember Ken Dorsey in Miami? Are you kidding me? Willis McGay, Will, Clinton Portis, Willis McGahey, Andre Johnson, Jeremy Shockey. Of course you look Santana Moss. Like, of course you look great. Everybody, you look at all that talent. Look at all those weapons. Everybody's open. All you have to do is just put the ball in the vicinity. But it is not hard when your talent is so great that you don't even have to, like, read a defense all the way through. Your talent will overplay whatever the defense is showing you. That's... Like, that's mind-boggling that there's teams that are that good in college football on offense. And quarterbacks, You even if the the scheme is right for the defense, even if they do it right, the talent's going to win. This receiver's going to beat that. It don't matter. And all you got to do is put it in the area. They'll go get it. And then after the catch, they're going to make a play. Najee Harris is probably the best back in the nation this year, but out of the backfield. He was the best back in the nation out of the backfield. So not only do you get the hand off to him, you can actually now play action to him because he's one of the best running backs on the ground in the nation. But now you play action to him and then sneak him into the flats. God, I have to tackle this guy running the ball. Now I got to cover him in the flat, but I got to watch out because I have these young tight ends and this freshman receiver and I got Devontae Smith here. And and listen, Jalen Waddle got hurt. If he has Jalen Waddle on the opposite side, oh my Lord. They would have they'd have scored 60 points in the national championship game. Devontae Smith got hurt, went out of the game. Jalen Waddle came in and played hurt. Shows you a little bit of heart, too. Think it was a, not a smart move, but shows you a little heart also. So quarterbacks is the way to go. You stick with your guy. Kyler Murray is gonna be in and in, in, he's gonna be there as long as Cl- Cliff Kingsbury is gonna be in, in Arizona. We've already seen Joe Burrow blow his ACL. We'll see him bounce back, I believe. Jared Goff has already been traded. Jameis Winston's already been let go. Andrew Luck is retired, and Cam Newton is a free agent. That's what the quarterbacks have looked like in the last 10 years in the NFL draft. Alex Smith asked to be released. There's a guy you can get. Chicago looks like a front runner to me because of his relationship with Nagy and knowing the system. But you do get a veteran. You do get a guy that came back from almost having his leg amputated. They almost were like, yeah, we might got to cut this. The, 
the infection that he was getting. And I mean, just what a story. And then to come back and play like that. But then Heineke, Heineke comes out and plays well in a playoff game for them and plays well in his spot duty. Signs gets himself a deal. And after that playoff game against the Buccaneers, I said, that kid made him some money. If anything, he made himself a little money. Somebody's going to look at that film and go, you know what? We could do some things with this kid. We could do some things with this guy. Let's go get him. And they're going to pay him. And they did. And Alex Smith said, hey, you don't want me here. That's fine. I don't want to be here. Let me go somewhere else. He's going to sign somewhere. He's not going to be a free agent. We all know Deshaun Watson. He had the Russell Wilson fiasco going on up there. God, oh. God, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but it's just when I come on air, especially after a week or two of being off, I just so much happens that I've just been I've been warning people about and telling people about. I have been beating the drum on Russell Wilson's divaness and just the, the kind of way he goes about his business, the kind of way he carries himself or sees himself. He sees himself as like the guy that's the reason why they're Super Bowl champions. And we all know that that's not the case. Because when you lost that defense and players started leaving and players started retiring and players started getting hurt and having retired, Cam Chancellor had to retire because of the net, just because all the big hits. Dude, you, your defense carried you. Yes, you're good. Yes, you can make some deep throw balls that look beautiful and, you, and you've made Tyler Lockett look like a superstar. Or has Tyler Lockett helped you? Because he's a great route runner. He's got great hands. He's never hurt. He's fast. He's smart and he knows how to get open. And if you just run around, run around, run around, run around, play hero ball, that's what I call it, it's hero ball, but he's allowed to do it. But when Mike Vick did it, oh, God, he got to learn to stay in the pocket. Nobody ever has said Russell Wilson has to learn to stay in the pocket. He's the black quarterback that's not unapologetic, so he's accepted by white sports fans and white sports media. That's how it goes, people, whether people want to admit it or not. That's the truth. The truth is when you are not unapologetically black, you are loved and beloved a lot more as a black quarterback or black athlete, period, by the media, i.e. Tiger Woods. White America loved him. Yeah, there's some racists still out there. There's some people that didn't want him playing golf and playing at the Masters courses and playing down in the South and playing with the white boys and still thinking they're old, ignorant, racist-ass ways, prejudiced-ass ways. That's fine. We know that's there. But because he was, I'm Cobbler and Asian, I'm black and Asian, and this and that and that, white folks are like, oh, okay, all right, I guess, I guess, I guess it's okay, you know, it's all right, it's like we still own him, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that's my white girl impression at brunch, you ever go to brunch, see the white girls that had too many mimosas, it's funny shit, so, uh, Russell Wilson, I God, I've I just been telling people all along, and that's because of the things that I've known from people that I know that have played on that team, and have been connected to that team, and have been in that locker room. And it's nothing that I'll ever put out on radio because it's a friend of mine, and I and I trust my sources, and I trust the things that I'm told by this gentleman. And ever since then, I'm like, yeah, he just seemed like he just came off as, you know. Uh, he just knows how to do it when the camera's on. And there's been other people in the media that have said the same thing. So I'm not banging it. It just is what it is. And now you have a guy that storms out of the office and because he wants more power. He wants more say-so on why he's running around so much and getting killed and getting sacked so much. Like, dude, are you serious? Have you? Oh, my God. Stop it. Stop it. Now it's everybody else's fault. But if you didn't carry that, remember, he got into sideline shit with defensive players all the time. They knew they were the reason why they were winning those games or putting him in position to put up points and to win by 15 and 20 point margins. And th- they knew it. And if they are bold enough to blow up on him on the sideline where they feel like he's blaming the defense in some subliminal way. Yeah. If your teammates know. I always tell sports fans, if you really want to know about a player, talk to his teammates. The teammate, when there's no cameras around, when, 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 you know, it's just the guys or the girls or the ladies or the men sitting around, when it's just them, those are the people who really, really know. Whenever I have former athletes on, uh, well, some of my favorite questions are, you know, funniest teammate, unpredictable teammate, you know, most loyal teammate, who's, you know, Best team. I, I love to I love to ask those questions because they're gonna give it to you straight. And they're gonna give it to you raw. Sticking with the quarterback theme, you can look at the guys coming out. You got Trevor Lawrence, you got Justin Fields, you got Jones, you got Zach Wilson, you got Trey Lance. Trey Lance, be very careful with Trey Lance. 
And I and I do always support the black quarterback as much as I possibly can. But at the end of the day, as a sports radio journalist, I have to be as as impartial as I possibly can for the broader sense of the topics that I talk about. It's always going to be my love for Kobe. It's always going to be my love for my teams. It's always going to be my love for Charles Woodson and saying he's the best defensive back the football's ever produced all around defensive back, not corner. Not no, he was the best defensive back that football has ever produced. And he showed it at every level his entire career from day one all the way to first ballot Hall of Famer. So, I mean, come on. It goes without it goes without saying. Didn't sneak under the radar. Wasn't not highly recruited and fought all the way. Th- no, 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 no. Junior year in high school, Mr. Ohio. Senior year, Mr. Ohio. Freshman, it's away from home. Goes through a little issue. Mama comes see him. Set him straight. Sophomore year, Big Ten honorable mention. Soft, junior year. Um, Jim Thorpe, national championship, Heisman, Big Ten defensive player of the year, All-American first team, top five NFL draft pick to the Raiders. NFL, Super Bowl, defensive player of the year, multiple Pro Bowls, multiple All-Pros, first ballot Hall of Fame. Top five or top six in INTs, pick sixes, uh, the 50-20-20 club, 50 interceptions, 20 sacks, and I think it's 50, no, 50, 50 interceptions, 20 sacks. I think it's 20 and 20 touchdowns. I believe that's the 50, 20, 20 club for defensive backs. Well, defensive players, but mostly you're going to get 50 interceptions. And mostly is defensive back work. But there's always going to be that biasness there. But I'm not saying anything out of the box. Most people would look at it and go, all right, well, I don't have an argument with that. If he wants to, if you want to like Ronnie Lott, fine. If you want to like Airy, fine. You want to like Troy, fine. But none of them did all the shit that Charles Woodson did. That's all, I mean, the argument to me, or debate even, it stops right there. None of those guys did all the shit that Charles Woodson did. So, it's like Jordan, right? 6-0. Six, oh. Six finals MVPs. Five MVPs. Top five scoring all time. Took two years off. Like, he took two, he's got two years off his career. Guy came back at 40 and was averaging 21 and 5-5. And five and five. Like, yeah, 40. Like, seriously, like at 40 years old, at his size, at his age, with the drinking and the smoking, and the, like he wasn't the guy that put a million dollars or two million dollars into his body every year, he lifted some weights, worked out, ran, did some jogging, but he drank a lot of yak, smoked a lot of trees, puffed a lot of gars, and is still considered the GOAT. So miss me with all that. I spent two million dollars on my body in the off season. And commentators talk about, he spends $2 million, man, on his body in the offseason. What a great shot. The, uh. But Trey Lance is coming out of uh, North Dakota. And I would be careful with Trey Lance. Love to support the black quarterback, but he reminds me too much of Teddy B. And I understand Teddy B had some wins and had some good minutes and uh, some good moments in Minnesota. But if you tell me you can win a championship with Teddy Bridgewater, you, I, then your team's got to be loaded, especially offensively. You better have a DeAndre Hopkins type receiver or Tariq Hill type receiver, and at least Kittle as your tight end, and um, you know Saquon at running back. Like, I don't think I don't think Teddy is carrying a team, and he has some good moments and he has some good games. He's not carrying a team through the playoffs onto a conference championship and then into a Super Bowl where he's doing the Super Bowl presser all week long. That's Teddy Bridgewater is not that guy. Trey Lance reminds me of Teddy Bridgewater. I'm still trying to figure out how a guy who has played as few snaps that he's had is even being talked about being in the first round. This is this is a mistake I watch GMs make. Like I didn't like the way Mitchell Trubisky got banged on, but I understood it. People was like, dude, it's one year. It's one year, and I know Chicago had been great. Maybe he didn't go to the right situation. Maybe Chicago's turning into the new Cleveland. Seriously, they can't get it. Chicago can't get it right. What's Chicago's best draft pick? What's their best last draft pick? Brian Urlacher? Isn't that wouldn't, wouldn't that be the Bears' best last draft pick? That's not good. And maybe they're turning into Cleveland, and Cleveland's turning around now. Cleveland now can't miss on the draft. But Trey Lance reminds me a little bit of Teddy B. Dak got paid, and I'm glad Dak got paid because it was time for Dak to get paid. 
40 million a year, 126 guaranteed. That's going to make $75 million next year alone. Jerry Jones completely screwed this up. And I was on Fox Sports 1 on the Odd Couple with Chris Broussard, and I said, the first person he should have paid was Dak. He would have got a huge discount. I know Zeke took his ass down to Cabo and didn't show up to camp. I said it back then on social media outlets and on radio shows. I'd have cut. I'd have traded. Excuse me, not cut. I'd have traded. Zeke or Ella, you could have got two first rounds for Zeke then. Zeke got his money. I said right on that show, he'll never be the same running back ever again. You can forget it. If you think you're ever going to get the Zeke back that was the guy that got everybody hyped about him and the guy that got everybody on him, you're sadly mistaken. He was never going to be that running back again. This past year, not even 1,000 yards. Who led the league in fumbles this year, people? Ezekiel Elliott. And his yards, yards per carry, touchdowns, and overall productions have all gone down since the contract. His fumbles per year have all gone up. His yards, of uh, uh, plays of negative yards rushing have all gone up. Yeah, I know the line's a little banged up. I know the line isn't what it was, but you're supposed to still be a bad boy. You're supposed to be a bad mom. You're supposed to still be the guy. Come on now. Saquon didn't have no line and blew this league up like, huh? Could you imagine Saquon with Zeke's rookie line? The line Zeke had his rookie season, his second year in the league? Give Put Saquon Barkley behind that line. Are you kidding me? He ain't got a line in New York. And it showed. I mean, I don't know if that play was uh, was in direct co- you know, correlation of of him not having a line, but I do know he don't have a line. He tore his ACL running to the outside, so it is what it is. But there's there's certain quarterbacks I would just be very careful on. Trey Lance is one of them. I'm not sure about Zach Wilson out of BYU. I'm not going to act like I've watched the kid play a whole lot because they didn't have a lot of games this year. And he played like four games this year. But people say he's got, I heard Tom McShay the other day say he's got some Pat Mahomes in him. That scares me. That scares me when I hear guys talk like that. Patrick Mahomey is a generational guy. You notice we only get generational guys like once every 15, 16, 17 years in sports. It's going to be per sport, per league. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, And then their whole career, there's always going to be a next guy that's like them. There's always, and I've fallen victim to it before. I remember thinking OJ Mayo was Kobe esque. I thought OJ Mayo could be on Kobe's level. Boy, was I wrong. I thought Quincy Carter could have been on Randall Cunningham's level. Boy, was I wrong about that one. I've been wrong about some stuff too. I'm, I'm 85 15 for a reason, people. I hit on 85% of the shit that I say is going to happen. My picks, the whole nine. I hit on 85%. But I am wrong. There is still that 15. I was really hurt by the Quincy Carter one. The Quincy Carter one, I still get reminded by friends of mine. Remember when you said, when you thought Quincy Carter was going to be? I did. Him, Craig Lumpkin. I've always had this infatuation with Georgia players. I don't know what it was, man. Champ Bailey, Herschel Walker. Um, oh, God. I'm, I'm miss, I know I'm missing one. Champ Bailey, Herschel Walker. Heinz Ward. Like there, there, there's some some Craig Lumpkin, no Sean Moreno. When no Sean Moreno signed with the Dolphins, I was gassed. I was like, hell yeah, I love no Sean when he was in Denver, and I hated that he went to Denver. I always had a crush with Denver running backs too, because I was a really big Terrell Davis fan. I loved the way he ran the ball. Terrell Davis was that guy, man. And the Maha salute was just so simple. It was just he had the gloves with the cutoff fingers. I've always loved running backs who wear the gloves with the cutoff fingers. When Cam start playing football, he I'm gonna take his gloves. I'm gonna be like, yo, bro, these the you wanna you wanna run old school, old school style. He better not have to wear glasses. You see, I wear glasses. His mama wear glasses. If he gotta wear glasses, he getting the goggles. We going Eric Dickerson style with Cam. Cam going to be out there with the elbow pad, the, with the old school elbow pads on. We going to bring it back. We going to bring it back. He going to be one of them throwback running backs out there, like putting in work. Looking like Eric Dickerson out there. Looking like, well, well he going to be bigger than Walter Payton. But Dickerson, Dickerson's a guy. Get, Dickerson or AP. But we definitely giving him the gloves with the cutoff fingertips. I've always had infatuation with Denver running backs, man. Even guy, even uh, um, 
Oh God, who fumbled? Who fumbled at the? Uh, no, that was Ernest Bynum. When Ernest Bynum played with the Red. When uh, he played with the Browns, but there was a there was Sammy Sewell. I think Sammy Sewell was the guy. There was a game, video game back in the day called Play Action Football on Super Nintendo, and I used to use Denver. And Sammy Sewell was their running back. I used to run all over my brother Terrence with Sammy Sewell. He'd be so pissed because he didn't know who Sammy Sewell was. So he didn't believe he was supposed to be. Uh, he's supposed to be that good. So, but anyway, back to the quarterbacks and back to keeping your guy. I think quarter teams need to all stick with their guy. Back to Houston for a second. I don't think Houston has handled this well, and I don't think that uh, Deshaun Watson has handled this well. This reeks to me of new age athlete want to control the narrative and control. Basically, I, I don't want to see the NFL turn into the NBA. That's what I'm hoping is not going to happen is the NFL does not turn into the NBA because it feels like that's where it's going. When you got guys like Russell Wilson who are sitting in front of the owner and the ownership and the coaches, whoever, front office people, and telling them, I want more input on, you know, like who comes here and the draft pick or whatever it was, the draft picks, the coaches, staff, whatever. Like, are you kidding me, dude? Like, oh my God, like Cam Chancellor and, and Russell and Richard Sherman and those defensive players on that side of the ball, man, Bobby Wagner. Oh, my God. I know these guys are looking at him like, are you kidding me? Earl Thomas? Earl Thomas a little thug, so you know he just slapped them. He just smacked them all up. They're about the same size with Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas is, is gully gully. Like, he had an incident with some side chicks and his girl and a gun and all some. It was in the press, so I'm not breaking news. You can go look it up online. I think the... I think the... Um, I think the Ravens cut him right after that, if I'm not mistaken. I think the Ravens cut him right after that. Or, uh, yo, Seattle had already let him go. He broke his leg. Didn't get his money. And flicked off the coaching staff. That's the type of uh, atmosphere Pete Carroll creates. <laughs> uh, he, left U- <coughs> he left USC. Excuse me. He left USC in a mess. <coughs> excuse me. And didn't think twice about it. So. But I think Houston and Watson have not handled this situation. Sorry. <laughs> that, uh, so, sorry for the uh, technical difficulties, my coughing there. That Houston and Deshaun Watson are not handling this situation well. And I, I think they both need to sit down. Everybody needs to sit down and talk. If you're Deshaun Watson, here, here's my thing. If you go to New York, if you get if the Jets pony up that second pick and there's talk that they could, you're going to go to the Jets. You're going to go to the bum-ass Jets. Who's your line, your receiver? They have a really good young defense that's coming along. They really do. New coaching staff, New York media will eat you up. I know you could go there and be a big star and do all your commercials and, and, and you can even film stuff there and be in movies and you can do... All types of things. You can be in an Adam Sandler movie. He loves the Jets. You can be in an Adam Sandler movie. You could be in a Kevin James movie. They love the Jets. But you're still going to play for the bum-ass Jets. And I'm not sure that that's something that you want. If you're Miami and you're looking to make the trade, I just don't like giving up 318 this year and next year's first. You're handicapped here. So unless you are going to kill it in free agency at the receiver position, Miami still needs a number one. I like Devontae Parker. He's not a number one. He may not be a number two, especially with some of the mock drafts I'm seeing. Where they have the Dolphins trading out of that third, sliding down a little bit and taking um, Pitts. And taking, I think it's, uh, yeah, Pitts out of, um, Kyle Pitts out of Florida. Who just had a monster year. He had 43 catches, 770, and 12 touchdowns. He literally carried that offense. He is a monster. 6'5, 6'6, 240, 245. Like he's a monster. He's Waller. He's Waller at the tight end position, but you could flank him out. You could put him in a slot. And they said he'll block. He'll line up and he'll block when you need him to. And you got to block at this point when you're when that good as a receiver. Because if they have to take you off the field to put in extra blockers, they know they, they know they're not throwing to you. You're on the sideline. So it makes the defense easier to defend you. He's a tight end slash receiver hybrid guy that's got to be on the field all the time. They have Miami taking him. I don't have a problem with that. But you still you still need a number one receiver. 
Waller, Waller is the number one target in Oakland, but if, if Rux Jr. ever really comes around and forms himself as an NFL professional wide receiver, he'll be the number one. His speed says so. His speed says so. He's too fast. He's too dangerous. He could take the top off of your defense so fast, so quick. He's your number one. And now, honestly, that makes Waller even more dangerous. Any any B rated, B plus rated, A minus slot you bring in this stick in there, undrafted player who runs great routes, has some speed, has great hands, doesn't drop balls, focuses, not trying to rip and run and party, loves football every minute, every day. You you can always go find those guys. Those guys are all over the place. You can always go find those guys if you need to bring them out. You can. That's my son. If you guys hear, Cameron is up now. I got enough show done. That if I did have to back off a little bit, I could because he's asleep. I had to jump on. I was going to wait even later. And I was like, you know what? Let me get on now. But he actually fell asleep two or three hours ago. So I knew he was not done for the night. I knew that was out. I definitely knew he wasn't done for the night. So, But if you if, if you were if you were going to take pits, then you, you, you better still go get a bona fide number one. If you're Miami, you still need a running back. Miami still needs a linebacker. And I know they want to do something at the safety position. Once again, if they're going to be dumb, just dumb, stupid, spending money in free agency, then fine. I don't mind. I don't mind the pitch draft pick. If you're going to trade out of it, you got to be getting something back from Denver. I don't want to just slide back to 13, 14 or 12 out of three, four pits for a tight end. You better get some word that Jalen Waddle or somebody else is going to slide in the in the draft. Are you just you you going to go get Juju? We've already went and got Juju. The free agency starts in a week, guys. So we'll know by the draft what teams will really need. Like it'll clear up some, a lot, especially for a team like Miami. If Miami goes and gets a few receivers or goes and signs two receivers or a receiver and a running back, Jones. From uh, Green Bay is an unrestricted free agent, but he's been a free agent. He's been attached to Miami, and plenty of articles and a lot of people that are in the industry think that they have a, a love fatuation for each other. He loves Flores, one of the assistant coaches on there, coached him at Green Bay and coached him in college. He loves that guy. I don't know if I would pay what they're talking about, possibly paying, but it does mean, okay, we don't have to go get ETN from Clemson. We don't have to go get Najee Harris from Alabama. We don't have to worry about a bus. We know what we're getting in the guy. A guy that's played in the NFL, played in the conference championship game, ran for 13, 14, 1500 yards in this league, scored double digit touchdowns in this league. Like he knows when you when you get a rookie, you have to teach them all this shit. When you get a free agent, they already know the deal. And if it's a nice marriage and it's a nice team up and you guys think that you can really win with what you bring in and what you collectively bring together, go get the guy. You have some other wide receivers that are free agents too. You got Godwin down and and and, and uh, just won a Super Bowl. Hey, we all know how it works in the NFL, right? You get a ring, go get your money. You get a ring, go get your money. It's like I got my Super Bowl ring. I don't need multiple rings. Chris Godwin at the receiver position doesn't need four rings to be called a, a good receiver or a great receiver in his era. He didn't need that. That's not the way we look at football. We only do that with basketball. We don't even do that with baseball. Some of the some of the best baseball players of all time don't even have a ring. Barry Bonds doesn't even have a ring. He doesn't even have a ring. King Griffey Jr. doesn't even have a ring. But then you got Derek Jeter may not have their power numbers, but he's got five rings. Five. But Derek Jeter also was a guy that just got it. Like, he's one of my top ten team athletes of all time. It's Derek Jeter. I think I had him at number, like, number nine or number eight. He just got it. Show up. Hey, man, and you can still mess with all the chicks, go to all the parties, do all the side stuff you want to do. Just keep it out of the press. Keep it out of the news. Keep it out of the media. When you go to Derek Jeter party, they take your phone. Like, I saw that article. I was like, wow, that's real. Yeah, they take your phone. Give me that. We're about to get wild up in here. No, I don't know how wild they were getting or what they were doing. But, you know, taking the phone, no, nah, you're not You're not posting this. And this is when social media was just getting, just getting going. Just starting to really make some moves. So, if you're Miami, I, I understand the Watson move, but you can't give that up. That's way too much. Other than that, I just don't see a team that that would be willing to give up what they like. If you're Minnesota, I thought about the Vikings. You you have you still got Adam Thielen, you got Jefferson. We know he's a bona fide number one receiver out of LSU with the rookie year he had. You got Dalvin Cook at the running back position, who I think is the most complete back. If you're Minnesota, I can see Minnesota giving up some draft picks, first round picks, a couple of them to go get now the guy that you think is your quarterback. Here's the thing. I know a lot of people, Kirk Cousins is not good. Kirk Cousins is not this. Like Kirk, 
Kirk Cousins only had, I believe, 30, he had 33 or 34 touchdowns last year, like only 10 or 12 interceptions, something like that. I did number, I did a show about it a while ago, and that's how I can kind of remember the number. And I follow the Vikings, so but and I could be off a touchdown or two or interception too. But he had a great year, like 4,400 yards, 4,300 yards. I know people said he can't play and he can't do this, he can't do that. But what I just saw was the defense hurt them this past year and gave up games and gave up points. Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook was the second leading rusher in the league. And he missed two games. He'd have ran for 2,000 yards if he didn't miss two games. He had 16 and some change. Well, he'd have got close to 2,000. Not sure if he'd have got the 2,000. He'd have got close to it, though. Ran for 16 and some change. Missed two games. If you're Minnesota, there's a team I can look and say, eh, give up to, I, you know, what are you going to go get? You have what you need on offense to get that kind of quarterback in that type of city and that type of fan base and that division. You could beat the Bears twice. You could beat the Lions twice. I mean, you're really only competing with Green Bay. We don't know how long that is because we don't know how long them and Discount Double Check are going to get along. I don't hear anybody talking Minnesota. I think it's a great fit. If your team, like, that's really it, though. Where else is Deshaun Watson going to go? I know a lot of people throwing Washington's name out there, but you still need so much. Of, you don't, Who's your receivers? Who's your running back? You got Chase Young, and you got a really good defense. Are you going to – that's, that's kind of that's kind of what he had two years ago. They were up 24 to nothing against the Chiefs, guys, in a divisional game in Arrowhead. Sold out, back, cold. I'm sitting on the couch watching the game. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What the hell is happening? What? D. Watts? I love Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson made me money at Clemson. Deshaun Watson put up a, a come on of over almost a thousand yards on Alabama in back to back years. All those defensive stars, they get drafted in the first, second, third round of the NFL. He whooped their ass two years in a row, stat wise. And then drove his team and threw the game winning touchdown with like two seconds, a second left on the clock. Like D. Watts is that dude. But what do you got to give up for him? Can your team sustain what you would have to give up for Deshaun Watson? Can your team sustain that? That's the thing. That's the question. I just don't think that Miami can. I don't know if the Jets can. If you think Bradford, I mean, not Bradford, I'm sorry. If you think Sam Darnold is your guy, you got to kind of stick with your guy and ride with your guy. You trade him and you trade that pick and bring in Deshaun and then, you know, another thing, too, nobody talks about. Deshaun's been hurt twice, guys. He's been hurt. That's a, that's why I'm a little finicky with him in Miami, and that's how I feel about Tua. Like, you've been hurt already. You're bound to get hurt in the NFL. Even Tom Brady blew his ACL. Even Brady took a, a guy falling into his leg and tearing his ACL and then being done for the season. Peyton Manning had neck surgery and neck issues. He was done for a season. Aaron Rodgers has broken his collarbone. He's missed 8, 9, 10, 12 games. Concussions, missed 4, 5 games. A lot of quarterbacks. Drew Brees, broken ribs last two years. A combined like 13, 14 games he's missed the last two, three years. You are bound to get hurt. Cam Newton missed the whole season. You are bound to get hurt in the NFL at the quarterback position. When you have already been hurt in college, and especially if it was an injury where people were questioning your return, to the sport of football, that concerns me as a fan. Whether our front office, my front office as a fan, as a team that I like, takes you. I love Justin Herbert. I saw Justin Herbert with my own eyes. I went out to uh, Oregon and went to a Montana-Oregon game after calling Cal Poly and Oregon State in Corvallis earlier that day. I drive down to Eugene and go to the I saw him with my own eyes. The guy I was with tapped me in the middle of the third quarter and goes, NFL quarterback? I said, yeah. He goes, number one overall? I said, could be. Definitely top five. He said, would you love him in Miami? I said, oh, God, I would, I would love him in Miami. He'd be in Miami for the next 10 to 12 years. We'd have an actual shot to build a franchise to go compete for a Super Bowl because we got the quarterback. If you think about it, if you have a quarterback, you have a shot. I mean, let's think about it. Go through the teams. Every year, Green Bay's got a shot to win a Super Bowl, right? Yes. Tampa Bay's got a shot to win the Super Bowl, right? Yes. The Kansas City Chiefs are the favorite to win the Super Bowl, right? Yes. 
Tom Brady's in New England. New England's the favorite or the second favorite to win the Super Bowl. Big Ben and the Steelers are always in the top four or five teams, right? Yes. Seattle Seahawks are always in like top five, six teams, maybe two or three, depending upon what the early season odds are. They started off 5-0 and this year. Everyone was calling Russell Wilson the best player of the, of the year. He's going to win the MVP. Teams that are struggling at the quarterback position, teams that can't figure out, Denver, Raiders, Dolphins over the last 20 years, the Jets, the Giants now that Eli's gone, everybody thinks they like Daniel Jones. Do they really like Daniel Jones? They're talking about moving Daniel Jones. You just drafted him in the top five, top six. Jacksonville, Carolina now with no Cam Newton. Detroit had Matthew Stafford for years, but it's Detroit. They just couldn't put, they had Matthew Stafford and Megatron for nine, ten seasons. They just couldn't put it together. Tennessee was struggling, got Mariota, looked okay for a little bit, did not fail. Now you got Ryan Tannehill, but you did just lose a first-round playoff game at home this year with Ryan Tannehill. I know he looked good a year ago, and everybody says, oh, Miami really screwed up, and I'm not trying to backtrack. I like Tannehill when he was in Miami. I thought that when he had good games is when the line played well. When the line didn't play well, he had bad games. But he's also not the guy that I think you can say, oh, yeah, down 14, down 17, put it in Tannehill's hand. He's going to bring it home. He's going to go get that game for us. That's not Ryan Tannehill. And I've always said, if you can stop Derrick Henry and put the game in Ryan Tannehill's hands, you can beat them even at home in the playoffs. I had Baltimore. I picked them on the show with the spread. Took the plus three with Baltimore to win that football game. I, 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 I cashed in on that. I was bragging on that on the Michael Carter morning show over on StreamYard. I killed that weekend, period. I think I went four and I think I went three and one that weekend. It took two road teams. But you have to have a quarterback or you don't have a shot. Denver's looking for a quarterback. San Francisco's been looking for a quarterback. Lucked out. They had they had Alex Smith for so long, but they were still just so bad. And then you luck up and you get Colin Kaepernick, and then that goes south. And then you don't have a guy that looks really bad there, and then you Jimmy Garoppolo falls in your hands. You go to a Super Bowl. Then Jimmy gets hurt, and now you're struggling back. You're, again, they're thinking of releasing or trying to trade Jimmy Garoppolo, moving up in the draft, and possibly taking, guess what, another quarterback. You've got to have a QB. And Deshaun Watson right now is the guy that's out there that wants out, and I just think it's maybe... Everybody keeps naming a lot of teams. I see three teams. The Dolphins, if they want to give up all that capital. The Jets, if they're not if they're not sold on Sam Darnold and they think they want to move on from Sam Darnold. Or um Minnesota. I know I heard the Raiders. I know I heard the Raiders name. I don't I don't like that move. The Raiders, the Raiders don't the Raiders, you, you what do you have to trade? What are you gonna trade for Deshaun? You'd have to give up probably Carr and Mario. They're probably going to want both their quarterbacks. And then your first-round picks, you're still building that team. You're still trying to build that defense and put that defense together. That defense was horrible. That defense was putrid this year. You still got to build that defense. So you still need draft capital to do that. You don't have a shitload of money. I know Vegas is bomb, and I know the, the Death Star Mothership Stadium looks dope as hell. All blacked out out there. I get it. But at the end of the day... You still have to figure out a way financially and draft capital to build a defense. Free agency, something's got to change on that side of the ball. You can't give away those picks to get Deshaun. Now, got a running game, got Waller, got Ruggs. It looks a lot similar, in my opinion, to Minnesota. But Minnesota also plays in an easier division. I already mentioned, they could beat the Lions twice. They could beat the Bears twice. They could split with the Packers. And you come down to the Raiders and you come out to the AFC West, you still have to play Kansas City twice. You still got to play the Chargers twice. And the Chargers got Justin Herbert. They're going to be better. It's messed up they fire Anthony Lynn the way they did, but, you know, it is what it is. And we know what that is, is. You still got Kansas City twice. Got to play the Chargers twice. Got to play the Broncos twice. Say the Broncos move up in the draft and they get a quarterback. You got Jerry Judy. You got running backs. You got a young defense. They were in a lot of games this year. They didn't get blown out, get their ass kicked. They don't have a quarterback. Once again, you have a quarterback, you have a shot. Say they move up. I saw one mock draft. Denver moves up to the number three spot. They take Justin Fields out of Ohio State. 
Buckeyes. Which I would not really mind. It'd be like, mm, that guy's got good football acumen. Big 6'3", 210. Big body, can run, can scramble. Fits Denver. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be rugged. It's going to be cold there. Played in that in Ohio State. So that's not going to be anything new to him. He's been in cold. He's been in inclement weather. But he can run around. He can make plays. And he's got a number one receiver already. You give him Jerry Judy. He's got a tight end. He's got a tight end. They got a great young tight end there. So you have some pieces there. If Denver jumps up there, so now you're playing Denver twice too. Your division just got harder. And you just gave up draft capital to get Deshaun Watson. And now you can't build your defense that was already bad. And now you have to chase. Now, here it is. Now you play Deshaun Fields twice, Justin Herbert twice, and Patrick Mahomey, league MVP, Super Bowl champion twice, with Andy Reid as the head coach. Like, that's... That's daunting. That is daunting. And Kansas City is going to be the front runner again. So those are the only teams that I would see. And I know some people have mentioned the Raiders. I just don't see the Raiders. I want to talk about J.J. Watt here for a second also too. Because this was a story that I thought it kind of just really shows how sports media and I guess certain football fans and just people that are into the NFL really are picky and choosy about who they want to hold like feet to the fire of what they say. We always like to tell each other or we'll, or your fans say, well, he said he was looking for this, but he signed there. He's about the money. He's not about winning. He was never about winning. He's only about himself. And I understand that when it's a black player, it is always used as a negative and it'll be flipped into a negative. Then it'll be massaged into a story that's not really there. When it's a white player, it'll be kind of brushed away or it'll be cleaned up a little bit. Or they'll try to bring somebody in and say, no, that's not true. I have a source that says this and this and this and this. And that's what we're seeing with J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt raised a lot of money when Texas and the Houston area caught those floods. They were just trying to get to a certain amount, and then it exploded, and it raised just all this money. And he was like this savior and this hero of, of South Texas, and that's that's fine. I don't have a beef with that. But then, you know, he's run his time there. You can see all year long, very, very itchy with the media there, very short and very uh, kind of, and I, and I get it. They were having a bad year. They're getting their ass kicked all over the field. Deshaun Watson led the league in passing, but that defense was just horrible. There's a sound bite, a sound bite caught of them walking off the field where J.J. Watt is apologizing to Deshaun Watson and saying, I'm sorry we're wasting your prime years. I'm sorry we're wasting such a great season you because the defense couldn't stop shit. Signs with Arizona Cardinals for $33 million, 20 is guaranteed. Everybody wants to know, is this a money grab? Were there other offers made? I think he's done and over the hill. Before, when he got released, before he signed with anybody, I didn't have the Cardinals. I'm not going to act like I did. I don't think anybody did because he said he wanted to win. He wanted to go to a contender. And I threw out Green Bay. Makes sense. He's home. Played in Wisconsin. He would be beloved there. Training camp will be nice and easy for him. They won't make him play a lot or practice a lot and run around and tackle. Hey, work out, stay ready. We're not even going to use you a lot. We'll let you get we'll let you get going and get warmed up in September and October. We really want to cut you loose after Thanksgiving in December and January when it's cold up here, man. And running backs don't hold on to that ball as well. And, and offensive tackles slip a little bit on the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. And you can get the advantage on a swim move and go sack the quarterback and get a strip sack in January and December when it's going to really flip the standings or put us in the playoffs or win a division or put us with the number one seed or the number two seed or get a home playoff game or have the number one seed and have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And Dominic and Sue just did that for Tampa. For Tampa and Dominic and Sue just did the exact same thing. Went down there, didn't hear his name much all year. Where'd you hear it though? Playoffs, wild card, divisional, conference game, Super Bowl. And he was in Detroit all those years. Got paid, then said, you know what? I'm going to go get my ring. Go get Tom Brady. Get a ring. But you look at J.J. Watt, and, I, you know, I think that if you can hide him, then he can be productive for you. But I don't think you can hide him. You can't hide four sacks a season. And and, and then I, 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 think, I, think, I think he retires in a season and a half. I don't think he lasts in Arizona long. And I think that some of these numbers I find and some of the things, J.J. Watt was in defensive player of the year twice. I, I get, or three times I believe it was. 
I get all the accolades, all the numbers, but I just want to read you guys a few things that I just went and kind of dug around and dug up, and I just wanted to try to compare them and say, okay, we remember these big flash moments, but I like to look over the totality of everything. For his career, he's got 531 tackles, 122 he assisted on, 101 sacks, so he's part of the 100 sack club. Two interceptions, two touchdowns. I thought that number was kind of low. I, I don't know why I could see him scoring like five or six touchdowns in his career. I only had two. Maybe I'm thinking of another player. Out of 101 sacks, he had 74 and a half of them from 2011 to 2015. In 2014 and 2015 alone, those two years, he had 20 plus sacks in two seasons. That was 40-something of those sacks just right, right there alone. It's 41 of those 74 and a half. From 2000 and, uh, well, 2014, 15, and 2016, from 2016 to 2020, he had 26 and a half sacks. Let me say that again. <laughs> from 2016 to 2020, he had 26 and a half sacks. That's five sacks a year in the last four seasons. That's five sacks a year. QB hits from 2015, from 2011 to 2015, he had 209 quarterback sacks. That's a lot of quarterback sacks. From 2016 to 2020, he only had 68 quarterback hits. Excuse me. Yeah, hits. 209 hits. From 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 68. That's a difference of 841 QB hits. He's played in eight playoff games where he only has six sacks. So J.J. Watt has never ever really superly like uh, affected and imposed his will on a playoff game. I think that that defense gives up big plays. Arizona defense gives up big plays. Didn't give up the big plays. I think that'll help him there because the defense that he was the captain and led gave up huge plays last year. Listen to these stats. They were 30th in the past, the Texans were. They were last in rushing defense, giving up almost 2,600 yards. 5.2 yards per carry, 27 touchdowns. Only the Raiders and Lions were worse. Through the air, they gave up 4,100 passing yards. They only had 15 sacks. 15 sacks. As a defense, you don't draw the attention to free up other people. J.J. Watt used to draw attention that would free up other people. He doesn't do that anymore. If you also look at where he's had some injuries. He missed one year where he missed, got hurt like the first week, missed the year. Then the following year, he got hurt in like game five, missed the year, missed the rest of the season. He's been hurt. His body's been banged up. How much do you think you can really lay on him? How much can he really give you? That's why I said going to Tampa or going to Green Bay or, or, or going to Kansas City, anybody like these veteran teams ready to win a championship, dude, you, your body would be, you'd be fresh in November. You'd be fresh by Thanksgiving weekend. Remember Tony Gonzalez's last year in Atlanta? He didn't even practice. No practice. He doesn't need to practice. He doesn't even practice. No one's going to hit him. We'll see him on Sunday. He's done this long enough. He's earned this. I'll give it to J.J. Watt. He's earned that. He's earned it. Hey, I don't have to practice. I can show up and trust me, I'll be ready. I'll be, I'll show, I'll be ready. And now I'm on a team that's, I don't have to, I'm not the top dog. Like, oh my, like, Tampa would have been so perfect for him. But he took the money. Back to my original point of starting this topic is people are defending him. Somebody came out and said, oh, there were other teams that offered him more. They got to try to save the great white image. They got to try to save the great white hope, the great white hype. The great white hope, that's who he became when he raised all that money for the floods in Southeast Texas. He became the great white hope. And now people are trying to save and defend them. This is a money grab. You go to a team that was in the middle of the road that plays Seattle twice, 
that could be playing a much better San Francisco team, and rightfully and probably so. San Francisco had so many injuries last year. That's the only reason why they were as bad as they were. They weren't a bad football team. They just had some bad luck with injuries last year. And you got to play the Rams twice. The Rams now have Matthew Stafford. You still got Cooper Cup at receiver, and you got you got uh, my man Woods at receiver. Hey, a lot of people love um, the running back out of Florida State. A lot of people think he's the next back. He's the next good back, great back. Sorry, his name is slipping my mind. How's his name slipping my mind right now? Dalvin Cook is on my mind. I know he went to Florida State, but that's not him. He's up in Minnesota. Akers, sorry, Cam Akers out of Florida State. He's the next back there. You got Higby at the uh, the tight end position. You got yourself a nice tight end. So you got to play them twice. You went there, but you said you wanted to win a championship, and nobody's picking the Arizona Cardinals to win the championship. But I guess it was okay because it's J.J. Watt. And the great white hype and hope players get to do that. But I just don't think that he's going to be um, that productive for them. Like I said, AP defensive player of the year three times in the league. Uh, 20, 2012, 2014, 2015, won it back-to-back years. Five-time Pro Bowl, five-time All-Pro. And you know what? And I thought about that, too. Got for got to be in the league nine years, ten years. Only All-Pro five times in Pro Bowl. But he did miss two years for injury, so I guess that does balance that out. But I, I, I see him as, I see him as uh, Cameron Wake in Miami in his kind of last two years. And Miami, after he got that extension and got that deal, he had one really good year where he could still get to the quarterback. And But his last two years there, you could see like he still looked great, still had the big python arms and still looked the part. But he just could not beat those young guys up front. He couldn't cause uh, game change in sacks. He couldn't cause QB strips, stripping scoops. You know, tack, TL, TFLs, tackles for law. He didn't, he couldn't cause anything. He was just a guy that they probably, everybody looked at and said, yeah, we could block on one-on-one now. We couldn't the previous years, but now he's not the same guy anymore. I look at him, I look at him like I look at, like I saw, like I saw um, Cameron Wake, and I think J.J. Watt is easily a four-sack guy this year. Five if he's lucky. I don't think it gets any better than that. But once again, an example of how you can somehow say you want something and then not follow through, and it's okay, but when some other players do it, they're selfish and they only care about themselves. And you had a former anonymous coach, assistant, come out and say that he is selfish and only cares about him stats, and he was the reason why they weren't that good because he would he would go off and just do his own thing, and he just cared about getting his numbers and getting his stats. So before we wrap up, man, I want to do talk a little bit about the NBA. Uh, Just really quick, the All-Star Game, stop it. Stop this AAU, pick them, I got next shit. Go back to East and West, what are we doing? What are we doing, NBA? What's going on? I didn't mind the way they did the shootout and all of that. Have it all on Sunday. That's fine. To be honest with you, that part, I was like, "Uh, all right, have the dunk contest at halftime. We don't need five and six guys in the dunk contest. It's not that popular anymore anyway. And all the best guys don't want to do it anyway anymore because they all follow and put and pop LeBron. When Shaq said, these guys are put and pops. When I was young, I had somebody said, criticism, right to me. I took it. I went and I worked on him. These dudes today, put and pops. Barbecue chicken, put and pops. Led by the biggest put and pop of them all. The King, LeBron James. That's me saying that at the end. That's not Shaq. <laughs> but, I mean, it's true. These guys are putting pops, man. So do the dunk contest at halftime like you did. Do the three-point shoot on the skills during the, pre, during the pre-show. Get it all in in one day. I'm not, I wasn't mad at that. But the game itself, this pick them. And then you, I mean, no Durant, no Embiid, no Simmons. No Booker. It's like five All-Stars missing. And the game was entertaining for about 25 minutes. About 25, 30 minutes. Watching Steph just bomb away is always entertaining. Watching LeBron trying to go for MVP and then starting off 2-7. or seven, Then not playing in the second half to say, oh, I sat the second half because his fan base, oh, he sucked. He sat the second half. The minute I saw... 
the starting lineup in the second half. I said, no, LeBron on the court. Oh, okay. He knows he's not getting that MVP, so he's gonna he's got he's got to pre he got to prepare for this and plan this. All right, two for seven is not looking good. Giannis is going off. Steph is going off. I'm a sit, so it just kind of makes me look better, you know, than actually playing out there, even missing more shots, having my shooter percentage be even worse. I mean, trust me, he's super calculated. If you don't think so and know about it, people, you're not paying attention. Call me a hater. Call me whatever you want to call me. I, I do. If you haven't noticed yet, I do not care. I'm on my live right now. And I want to see. I want everybody to make sure they see my balls. Y'all see my balls hanging? There you go. Oh, on radio, they can't see. It's these football and, <laughs> it's these football and basketball little uh, mini. Uh, they hang from a crib. Somebody gave them to my son. But he doesn't like them. He doesn't use them. So I said, I'm going to put them on my microphone. So one's a football, one's a basketball. Everybody that's on the YouTube and the IG Live can see it. But everybody, of course, listening to VJs on Sports like Conduct on Spreaker.com live right now can not. So other NBA news. Uh, but the All-Star game, just real quick. Again, East and West, that's it. The way they did all the extra stuff, I don't mind it all on one day. But get back to East and West. Get back to some East and West pride. Play a little defense, people, just a little bit. But I, you know, I understand how to get it. Some of the buyouts that are going on right now, too, I'm very interested in. I'm glad my Detroit Pistons got rid of fake Frosted Blake Griffin. He has now moved on to the New Jersey Nets. I know there's supposed to be a buyout for Drummond, who got traded from Detroit. Detroit got off that contract, too, and unloaded all of that, that he was going to want money he was going to possibly want in the future. A guy that's in Cleveland right now, and I listen, I tell you all the time, 2020 guy. He is. He is a legit 2020 guy. But unless you got like two superstars and then some other role players, he's not a guy that's going to change your franchise. He's just not. The game isn't that way anymore. And I'm, I feel bad for him because now I see him shooting threes and it's like, well, there goes your dominance. Your dominance is gone. No one can guard you. It's like Embiid. Doc Rivers showed up to Philly and said, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get your big butt in the post. That's what we're going to do. Because there's nobody that can guard you. I get what the league is. I get what people are doing. But this is going to help us. And I, I don't trust them in the postseason. Because I know Doc, I've seen Doc Rivers in the postseason. So I don't trust them in the postseason. But I am looking at them like, okay, I feel you. I see you, Doc. They have finished with the number one seed in the East. Philly 24 and 12. Now, a game behind them is Brooklyn. They got to watch out for Brooklyn. But Brooklyn, I'm trying to figure out what's up with really with Durant. Is he really just coasting and resting? Is this all strategic where it's like, man, I can play, but I'm going to just chill, rest, be ready down the stretch so I can just light y'all, like, I just light y'all up? I'm going to let Kyrie. I'm going to let Kyrie and James run it right now, implement some of these other guys, get they think, because I can just come in and just get 30. Like, it's nothing for me to come in and get 30. No one can guard me. No one can stop me. I'm the Durantula. I'm seven feet. I'm a seven feet guard. I'm a seven foot guard. I can play on the wing, I, and, and I play D. And I'll D you up, and I'll chase block you down. I can strip the ball. I, I can even change. He can change shots. Like, Kevin Durant's a complete player. And I'll, people go, well, he's not a great passer. He ain't got a pass. When you do all that other shit, he got passers. He played with Harden and... and and Kyrie, why he's got to pass? Why the fuck would Kevin Durant have to pass? Like when he was in Golden State, well, you don't pass. Well, to who? You got Clay, you got Steph. Now, nah, when you get the ball, go get yours. Because when Steph get the ball, he gonna get his. And when Mama call him Clay, I'ma call him Clay. When he get the ball, he's gonna get his. Milwaukee at twelve and fourteen, two games behind Philly. So I think those are probably the three best teams. Boston's got to make some type of move. I'm not sure what move they're going to make. And I think Boston will make a move. But I honestly believe Boston has to. Boston has to make a move. They got to bring in another player. And they're already, they're already talking like they want, they want Brad Stevens. They want Brad Stevens' head on a stick in Boston. The New York Knicks are 19 and 18, sitting at the four seed, at the five seed. Now we know they have this new uh, format, seven through not ten. I'll have a play-in tournament to get in, and that would be Charlotte, Toronto, Chicago, and Indiana. And then, of course, the bottom dwellers in the East: Atlanta, Washington, Cleveland, Orlando, and my beloved Pistons. That's fine with my Pistons. I'm not mad. People can make jokes and talk shit all they want to. That's cool. I could take it. But I'd much rather see my team in the basement for a few years, building and building. Luck up with a top pick or a number one pick or luck up with a free agent and a trade, a free agent signing or a trade to a star and get that city back going again and get that sport back going again because Detroit needs it right now. The Lions some shit, the Pistons some shit, the Tigers some shit, the Red Wings some shit. That city needs it bad right now. And they've had their glory days. Over to the Western Conference, Utah is still 
at the top seed right now, 27 and nine, two and a half games over Phoenix, three and a half over the Lakers. The Lakers are half a game in front of LA. This whole thing with the Lakers, Phoenix, Utah, and and um and Clippers right now, this 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 thing is all it's super tight. Six and up is super tight. Portland is only five and a half games out of first. Now I don't think they'll catch first, but they're two games behind the Lakers for the third seed. It's all going to depend on what happens when AD comes back. And I still think that no Rondo, no Dwight, and no JaVale, the lack of size and athleticism and defensive presence and changing and blocking of shots and lob ability, you're, got, you're down to Montrez Harrell. If he twists an ankle or pulls a groin or a hamstring, it's, oh my God, they're in super trouble. They're super trouble. Schroeder, who I don't know why LA Radio keeps bringing, like trying to really pump this guy up. He is so average, it's not even funny. He is so he is not Rondo. He will not play one series the way Rondo played any of the playoff series last year in the bubble. And with for the Mickey Mouse Bubblegum Championship. He won't play, he won't play one series that well. Wesley Matthews, no thank you. Already been in Dallas, Portland, and then back to Dallas, I believe it was. No thank you. That, that over Danny Green, a guy that's won championships. You got Caldwell Pope. Pope, he's having shooting horrific troubles right now. Early in the season, looked good. Now it's just kind of like, uh, this is what he is, though. This is why Detroit let him go. Detroit dropped him in the first round. He was SEC player of the year coming out of college. But he, I mean, he's a middle, he's an average middle of the road three point shooter. They're great on defense, the Lakers are, and Vogel has brought that. Vogel has brought that defensive mindset. And that defensive playability. So the 6, 7, 8, and 10 would be the Spurs, the Mavs, the Warriors, and Memphis. They're going to fight out for those last two spots. The bottom dwellers, the New Orleans Pelicans at 15 and 21. How? How? How are the Pelicans 15 and 21? How? You have Lonzo. You have Hart. You have Ingram. You have Zion. You have JJ. Like, how in the hell? Are they is Van Gundy that bad of a coach? Is Gundy that bad? OKC okay, expected Sacramento is supposed to be a little different, but Sacramento there it's the game's different. Darian Fox, you had Tariq Hill, like you're trying all these guards. You got Buddy Hill there, but he was banging down threes. You're still 14 and 22. Houston. 11 to 23. You want to get rid of Harden? Yeah, all right. Have fun. Minnesota, number one overall pick. Townsend, I know Townsend. I call Anthony Towns. Excuse me, he's going through some stuff. I I, I get that. I, I do. D'Angelo's there, though. 7-29. and 29. Yikes. That's ugly. That's bad. So if we go back to the West, we look at Utah. Utah's playing well. Utah's in first place. Best record in the league. Playing very well. It's all about Quinn Snyder, man, that coach. Guys, coaching trees matter. Coach of Trees matter. You know what Coach of Tree, Coach of Tree he comes off of? Larry Brown. That's why they look like the Pistons of 04. We got a, a star, but Donovan Mitchell is, is he upper echelon superstar? No. Star? Yeah. Superstar? No. Pistons has star. Like, she was a star player. He was a, not by probably by the time he got there, but she was a star player. So is Chauncey Billups at a point. He was a star player. Rip Hamilton, lottery pick, star player. They're star players. People try to say, oh, they didn't have any stars. Yeah, they did. They had three of them. They had three. They didn't have any super stars. They had stars. And I think that's why Utah is playing so well and looks so well. It's because they just play as a team and they got stars. Hey, children out there, hey, you don't have to score. Just be Go Bear. $200 plus million dollar max contract to block shots and play defense. Not a bad gig. Phoenix Suns, I know they're not playing a full 82. At the beginning of the year, I said they would win 50. And now I have to adjust that because they're not playing those games. So I say they win 45. They're already at 24 and 11. I think they get uh, they get another 20 to 24 wins before the year's over, I, I believe. Well, shit, that would put them almost close to 50 games. So, no, I would say 42. They'll win 42, 42 or 41 games this year, the, uh, the Phoenix Suns will. And they, they look great. They really do. It's not even about Devin Booker. Listen, they beat the Lakers last week, and Devin Booker got ejected. And they beat the Lakers, and the Lakers still have LeBron on the court. And they had everybody else but AD. The Lakers, we've talked about already. The Clippers, the Clippers are still so hard to figure out because 
even at 24 and 14, you still feel like you haven't seen the best Clippers team. You haven't, I, I haven't seen the best, I haven't seen them play their best just yet. Even all the way back to last year, I just, I haven't seen the best Clippers team yet. And I think we keep feeling that when we do, or if we do, their championship type team. Portland, 21 and 14, five out of first place. What more can you say about Damian Lillard? No McCullough, no Nurkic, and just doesn't cry and complain and piss and moan and want to get traded and want to get out of here. We need this guy and that guy and that guy. Like, nah, just y'all chill. I'll get us to 21 and 14 at the All-Star break at the fifth seed. Five and a half games out of first place. If y'all two can just come back, man, ready and like, you know, late March, April, we could creep up and finish in the third or fourth seed and cause some trouble. That's how I look at Portland and Dame Lillard. Denver, disappointment, 21 and 15. They should not be 21 and 15. You have too much talent. Here's the thing, though, that I was wrong about. I thought what Utah is, is what Denver was last year. I thought I looked at Denver and I was like, yeah, that's going to be the team that's going to surprise people and be like at the top of the Western Conference next year. Utah, I thought, no, nah, that's just what they are. First round exit team. That's just what they are. And they adjusted their game, they adjusted their roster and the style of play. They're first, and now Denver's sitting in the sixth seed. So I got that wrong last year. Spurs, oh, pop. 14 and 18 and 14. 18 and 14 at the break. Sitting at number seven. Seven out of first. Game and a half behind six. They're a game and a half. They're a game out of six. They're a game and a half out of fifth. See, the Spurs are. Somebody name me three San Antonio Spurs right now without looking it up. Exactly. Popovich has done it again. Dallas Mavericks starting to turn it on a little bit. We're uh, four games under 500. Gone on a little winning streak. Got the 18 and 16 at the break. But they got to figure out what they're going to do with Porzingis. And they got to figure out how to get more talent around Luka because he is legit. Steph Curry's holding on to number nine with the Warriors at 19 and 18. They lost some real nail biters and some tough losses going into the All-Star break. That might, I think, might doom them. But once again, they're missing Clay again this year. They're missing Clay again. Two years in a row, they miss Clay now. So it's it's uh it's wild. Uh Memphis, once again, trying to stand higher at 16, 16. You have a better team than that. And then New Orleans, we've already talked about 15 and 21. The Eastern Conference, they're not a team that really surprises me. But what I will say is the bubble showed everything isn't what it seems. Tom Thibodeau, guys, hey, guy can coach. Got the Knickerbockers, 19 and 18. They ain't been 19 and 18 in a long time. So I think Melo was there when they won 50 games and went to the playoffs. Boston at 19 and 17, I've already mentioned them too. I just don't think, I like Tatum. I just don't think he's a super duper star. I like Tatum a lot. He's not going to lead your team to the championship. You have a guy that's on that's as good as Tatum or better, and uh, Jalen Brown's got good numbers, but he's too quiet. It's a different. It's a different win. Listen, when you want to win, you got to open your mouth. A lot, a lot of quiet dudes win. People go Kawhi, Duncan. All right, bro. I just said not a lot. I ain't saying nobody not a lot. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going in the NFL. Keep going in Major League Baseball. Keep going in hockey. Keep going in tennis and NASCAR and golf. Keep show me the quiet people that win all the time. Or that win a lot. Show them to me. You can't. Winners talk. Leaders talk. Milwaukee starting to turn around a little bit too. They were fluttering. Had people try, talking. What's with Milwaukee? What are they? I like Giannis. I'm just, I'm still, my, the, the jury for me is still out on Giannis. And that's only just because we're in year three now of him talking about changing this game and adding. And I see the same game. That's all I'm saying. I just see the same game, man. And he still can't hit free throws. Brooklyn, look out. And then I like Philly. Philly or Brooklyn will be a great seven-game Eastern Conference Finals. That would be a great seven-game Eastern Conference Finals. The Nets and the Sixers, right up and down I-95. That's all I got to do is do I-95, Philly to New York, and then New York back down to Philly, and Philly to New York, and then right back down to Philly. That's what's up. That'll be a great Western Conference. Uh, excuse me, Eastern Conference Finals. Western Conference, I can't call it because it could be the Lakers. Dwight, I mean, not Dwight. AD could come back and change the whole table. Clippers could turn it on, change the whole table. Utah could keep going and, and oh, well, they're not going to win the first round, win. Oh, they're not going to win the second round, win. Oh, well, they're not going to win the, the Conference Final. And you could be looking at the Jazz in the Finals. I've seen, I'm old enough to say, I've seen it happen before. I've seen the Jazz make the Finals. When people didn't think that the Jazz were going to make the finals. 
You got Phoenix. I don't think Phoenix is a championship team. I think the Clippers, the Lakers, or Utah is going to be in the Western Conference Finals. I don't think Phoenix will be there. I just picked them to win a lot of games because I like their team. And I like what they have and what they've done on the court. But I don't think that they're a championship team. And I like Philly and I like Brooklyn and the Eastern Conference Finals. Boston's, you know, can make some noise and so can Milwaukee, but I have to see it. And I think once Brooklyn's whole, God, Kevin Durant, Kyrie, you don't have a guys that could get you 20 or 30 or even 40. You got three guys that could get you 50 on any given night and that have all done it. When you can get me 50 in a playoff game and carry the whole team, that's, that, that's, that's insane. That's unheard of, man. So uh, some of these other buyouts that I think that will happen, uh, that I would like to see happen, one particular, I would like to see Houston – Get P.J. Tucker out of there. Buy P.J. out. Let P.J. go play where he wants to play. Let him just go sign with somebody else. P.J. Tucker, he's giving Houston his all. Defensively, offensively, as a leader, image, off the court, in public, in society, uh, 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 charity. He's giving his all. He's giving enough to you guys in, in Houston. Houston should let him go and should let him uh, get to another team where he can win. Everybody thinks that everybody, everybody, especially out here in L.A., Thinks the Lakers are going to get everybody, so that's always that's always fun. Now they're gonna, now they're now they're going to make a play for Drummond, but also to another NBA new uh, news that I think is much worthy. Robert Covington of the Portland Trailblazers went to Middle Tennessee State. He is the only HBCU graduate in the NBA. That's got to change. We got to figure out how to start to get these kids to these HBCUs. And start building our HBCU sports programs up. We got to figure this out real fast. It's bad, man. It really is. We're giving a lot of money. We're getting a lot of exposure to these other big colleges. They ain't for us. They ain't for our people. We need to start bringing it home, man. I'm going to wrap up tonight's show. I don't want to keep going on long and long and long, man. I feel like we got some good talking. I haven't been on in about a week or so. Got a lot going on. I told you guys we are revamping the show, and I'm working on my reel to get the net worth because I'm trying to do something a little different with my wife. Got a, uh, another family member on his way and showing up, so times have changed. Recap today's show or tonight's show, stick with your quarterback. I think that is super important in building camaraderie within your team. Love to see that dad got paid. Ha ha, Jerry Jones. Waited two years too long to do it. You done it two years ago. You just saved yourself a bunch of money. Now you got to pay this man the forty million a year that everybody said that he wasn't going to get. And Dak Prescott is going to get his forty million. I know him and his brother are dancing like crazy in their house. Some of the quarterback changes we've seen: Wentz to the Colts, Golf to the Lions. Uh, Matthew Stafford to the Rams. Alex Smith is asked to be released. Cam Newton's a free agent. Deshaun Watson wants out. Russell Wilson wants out. And then the rookies you got coming in. You got uh, Trevor Lawrence. You got Justin Fields. You got um, uh, Matt Jones. You got Zach Wilson. You got Trey Lance. Big Ben has restructured his contract to make it more friendly to get some help and help out that team in Pittsburgh and stay in Pittsburgh and stay, you know, with. I think he wants to retire Stiller. And I just think that the thought of him wearing another uniform or going somewhere else and playing, he, he I, don't, I don't think that's what he wants to do at all. So that's a recap on today's show, man. We talk a lot about quarterbacks. I'll come back on probably later this week or maybe this weekend, and we'll get some more NBA, NFL talking. Let some things kind of materialize a little bit and open up. It's been a slow sports week and a half, honestly. I mean, with the NBA on break right now from All-Star Weekend, it's really hard to grab a lot of stuff. But, uh, you know, we talk some good football and we'll get some more, man. I want to appreciate I want to thank everybody. I appreciate everybody listening live on Spreaker.com, VJ's on Sports for Light Conduct. I love you guys, man. Y'all stay blessed and I'll see you around. Don't forget to catch us on the iHeartRadio app also. Go over to the iHeartRadio app. Go to the search box. Put in VJ's Unsportsmanlike Conduct, our channel over there. Come up in every episode, all 357. Are we at 357? 357 episodes. Wow. You. Wow. Yay us. 350 episodes are all on there. You guys can all go and see them and, uh, and check them out. And just relive and see if I'm bullshitting. Do I be really telling it like it is and giving y'all the giving y'all the business on the picks or not? So wrap up tonight, man. Appreciate everybody on my on my uh, my YouTube. Appreciate everybody on my IG over there. I still see people are jumping in. Miss Carla Black Blackerberry. Oh shit. Hmm, Miss Blackberry, let me wave to Miss Blackberry. That's like the episode on Martin when uh, Jerome was like, uh, 
Nah, this is Blacker Jack. See, Blacker Jack is 22. This is not Blacker Jack. This is Blacker Jack when they was partying at Club Shiznick when he was trying to still get Pam. All right, man. I'm out, guys. VJs and Sportsman like Conduct. Spreaker.com.